get it back on time. So right now we're going to do marketing, social media, so podcasts, events, and promotion with Dina Ray with Ebook Builders and author Mary Elizabeth. Okay, I'm Dina. Y'all see me, I usually have one hat on or another and I'm all over the internet, so I know a little bit of what I'm going to talk to y'all about. Um, you want me to get started? Yeah. Okay, when... No. I'm going to apologize right now, I dropped a lot of F-bombs, are there any kids here that are going to be offended? It's going to happen, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Everyone's going to tell you, for marketing purposes, it takes the average person seven to ten times to see something before it registers. With all of the social media that's going on now, I guarantee you it's more like 50 times. So that's why you see these people that are on Twitter and Facebook and they're like, buy my book, buy my book. It's irritating. Don't be one of those irritating douchebags that does this. <coughs> Find other avenues other than just tweeting out your book link. You know, put your put it a tagline in it. Give a a teaser and hit the blogs and develop a good relationship with the book bloggers. If you get someone to set up your your um, book tour, which a lot of people do them, everybody that posts your book on their blog, go and say thank you. Because it, it takes time to do the blog post. Even if someone sends the code, it still has to be tweaked to, for each and every author site. And that goes a little to what Mary Elizabeth wanted to say about your online persona and keeping your reputation right. Sure. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about um, our personalities on social media. Um, I'm newer to the publishing world. Um, my book's been out for a month now, but I've been part of the writing community for quite a few years. Um, and social media is kind of like a newer thing for everybody. I mean, it seems like every single day there's a new, you know, there's a new website that we can use to promote our books. And but I have to say. Facebook and Twitter are probably the most popular and the ones that most of us interact. Um, and it's not only a place where we authors talk to each other, but most of our readers and our fans are on Facebook also. So, um, and I see, you know, I'm on Facebook every single day and um, one of the biggest things that gets to me is these, every single day, it's like rant alert and you go on and on about bad reviews, um, Returns, things like that, and it's and I as a writer, I totally get it. But if I was a fan and I was reading how you do not like this review or that review, I would be offended. So I think keeping um, keeping that separate from the people who actually buy your book and the people who actually support you is really important. Um, you make your rants public, save them for your private groups. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And relationship with other authors also. Um, I have a lot of great relationships with authors, and, and there's always things that bother us, but to go online, and it, it just doesn't look good when you're online and you start saying bad things about either your fans or other authors or bloggers or things like that. And that goes for bloggers also, or cover artists or editors. When you go online and you start saying that you're offending the people who are supporting you, whether you mean to or not, especially with like the, the, uh, the big posts but on the other side of that, there's a lot of good with Facebook because you actually get to meet. <laughs> oh, um, you, you get to interact with your people. Talking about you.
where you promote your book, where you meet with your writers, where you meet other people that can end up helping you. I just think it's important to stay professional and keep your um, personal things out there for the time. to uh, say a few words. <laughs> Could you guess? I was just going to touch a little bit on, um, my name is Kay S. Hagwood, and um, I was just going to touch a little bit on the, um, see, I cannot be a front of people. See, I, I was fine back there. Um, Yes. Um, reviews. Uh, the way that I look at reviews, whenever, whenever I wrote my first book, I, I had a bunch of five-star reviews coming in, and I was feeling all on top of the world. It was great, and I was like, "Wow, you know, you know, this feels really good." And then I got my first one-star review, and I was like, "Oh my God, I'm a horrible writer." <laughs> I mean, it just floored me, and I, I took that really personally. And then I had a friend of mine that doesn't even read, and I, and I was at my day job. In case y'all didn't know, you know, writers have day jobs too. But we can't live on the income when we first start writing. But um, I'm telling you, <laughs> um, but. I was just really floored by that that first bad review, and and I felt like she was she was writing it, and, and it it just felt really personal to me. Instead of her bashing my book, I felt like she was bashing me. But some uh, a friend of mine said, "Well, look, you know, you have a whole lot of five star reviews and four star reviews, and you have this one star review." If someone gets on Amazon and is looking at reviews, you know they're gonna they're gonna read these five star reviews and these four star reviews, and then they're gonna read this one star review and be like, "What the hell is she talking about? I want to pick this book, pick this up, pick this book up, you know, just because just to see why she had a, a conflict with it." And I was, you know, I, I thought about it from that perspective, and then I've heard over over the years that I've been writing that. You know, bad reviews sell too. I've got books that they got a shitty review. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, bad reviews sell, and and I love each and every one of my reviews. It doesn't matter if they're a a five star review or a one star review, and they're bashing me or they're bashing my book. Everybody likes different things. You know, they you may not write something that everybody's going to like, and I mean, I don't like everything. They are. Opinions are like ass out. Everybody's got one. Um, but, I don't know. I, I I love all my reviews. If I get a bad review, I'm happy about it. it I don't, I don't it get it. It's a constructive review. It doesn't. Even, it doesn't even matter. It, I mean, it, if someone is bashing my book or bashing me, you know, I, I'm fine with that because someone's going to read that, and they're going to they're going to just by reading the review, they're going to know. At least you Yeah, I, I wrote the book. Okay. Okay. How many of y'all have blogs or websites? The others. Why don't you? That's a place that's marketing your book all the time. If if I read your book and I like it, if <laughs> if if you've got an Amazon page, Author Central, you should have that. You can have it linked to your blog and to your Twitter. You can't have it linked to your Facebook, which that's stupid. But you can have those. People, if they're reading your book, can go to your blog go to your website. Always have every 
purchase link. Everywhere your book is available, have it listed on your blog. You are you would be amazed at the number of authors, and I'm, we're not talking, you know, ones that are just starting out. We're talking ones, 50 books in their bookshelf, and they don't have purchase links on their websites. That's, don't make me search for it. I'm fucking lazy. I'm not going to search for your shit. If I can't find it like this, I don't need it. And I'm not the only, I'm not a writer, by the way. So, um. But that's, that's just what you, I'm telling you what I tell my clients. <laughs> but um, I did write one, and no, it's not about that. <laughs> um, and, but with your blog, also get with a group of writers on Triber, and they share your blog posts. Do y'all know what Triber is? T-R-I-B-E-R-R. -E -R -R. Okay, it's a blog amplification. You sign up and there's all kinds of other tribes where they, where there's a group up to like 30 for the, for the free tribes and everyone shares your blog posts and you share theirs. Some people are going to blog once a day. Some people are going to blog multiple times a day. Some people are going to blog once a week. But the whole thing is you share for them to share. So you're not just getting it in front of your Twitter followers. You're getting it in front of her Twitter followers. And then her Twitter followers. And then all those people that retweet. You don't have retweeters? I think so. <laughs> so and don't don't waste your time buying Twitter followers. I know it makes you look like a rock star, but those fake people aren't buying your shit. They're not retweeting your stuff. They don't care. You're not going to sell anything to them or any of their followers, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. and, and Facebook likes. Pardon? We were saying they also Facebook. buy Facebook likes. Oh, I know. Yeah. And if you want to get Facebook likes, I did penny likes. I did the penny ads. I paid one penny. I got 300. Really? One penny. There's actually a book on Amazon about the whole buy and get. Are they real people though? Yeah, they're real people. No kidding. No kidding. Now, I did this about eight months ago they might have changed their algorithm again there's also a book on Amazon about the whole one penny getting Facebook likes for one penny I think is the name of it or, or something along that line I use that and I actually did get them I mean do in, you think that you'd be able to find that book and be able to let us know what it is at some point over the weekend yeah I'll check on my my, okay, uh, my do you think that's a good idea though like buying followers on Facebook I didn't buy followers. I did the ads. I didn't buy followers. It's not a good idea to buy the followers. No, right. don't buy the yeah, followers. No, really they're not, and they're not they, real they people. even have, they oh, have the Facebook like farms too. Yeah. So if you, where even if you're not buying the likes, suddenly you'll have a whole bunch of likes come across on your, your author page or your fan page or whatever. And they're part of the, the thing. But they're like rent. They come in spurts. But it, it doesn't affect well, your Well, not only that, but there are companies out there that will guarantee that you make New York Times bestselling list. Yeah, well, there's a lot of companies that guarantee I'm going to meet Mr. Wright. I'm not going to fucking no, do it. No, no, I know. I, I know. Exactly. I know. But what, what they do is they have all these people that they're fake people. And they, 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 the author buys. They put their price at 99 cents. The author buys it and sends it out to all these people. They accept, they accept, they accept, they accept. You hit that 1,200, the 6,000 mark, whatever it is that you need to do, USA, New York Times, and bam, you're there. I just watched an author do it last week on her first book. Yeah, but, well, then you also have the ones that bought, you know, get the service to go and they buy the actual print book and then turn around and fucking return it as soon as they hit up there. Right. So, but... 
Yeah, no, there are there are there are ways for you to become a yeah. Become there's a there's bestseller. always ways to game it. And there is. Sooner or later, someone's gonna find out, and there's all kinds of websites that are gonna fucking call you out over it. I mean, my husband did all the research. He's like, why are these certain people doing it and these other people aren't doing it? Some are, of course, Colleen Hoover, well, we you know call, what? you there know, are... all these things. But he said there are actual ways to, to hit the formula, Lisa. There are actual ways. And I'm like, I am never, ever going to do that, ever. And he goes, I know, but I just want you to know that there are people out there that do this. They hit the formulas right on target and they make it. Well, that's just like you have, you know, black hat SEO companies and white hat exactly. SEO companies. You're always gonna have someone gaming it. And, you know, yeah, it, it might look great to say, I actually hit the New York Times bestseller list, but I think if I did that, I it would wouldn't feel, feel good. About this you, big. Yeah, no, I because would, I didn't do it on my own merit. It would not feel good at all. It'd feel like and I, I mean, was you a have, You have sweet. street teams. Like you cheated. Utilize, yeah, cheating. cheating. You have. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. I'm not laughing. Okay. I mean, you you have street teams, which I don't know jack shit about street teams, so I can't tell you. Really? Anything. You don't know anything? I know enough to get me in trouble. <laughs> okay, go on. Tell me why. Um, a lot of people are against street teams mm -hmm. for the simple fact that. They feel that they're that the people that have the authors that have the street teams are gaming the system. I don't think they are. You have a what I think in a perfect world what a street team is is like a very energetic fan club. Yeah. Okay. They're going to buy your books. They're going to read your books. They're going to tell every one of their real life and online friends you got to read this. And just like if you're in a fan club from the 70s. Don't judge. <laughs> like yeah. disco music or? I love disco. <laughs> he grew up listening to it. Screw it. Son? That's my son. Nice. Um, but he, uh, I was talking about street teams. <laughs> three teams, three teams. <laughs> okay, fan clubs. Well, if you were a member of a fan club, 70s, 80s, they still do it in the 90s, I haven't but Probably. Like, you would get like free posters oh, yeah. of this person or you would get, you know, like a little single or whatever. You you got goodies for being a fan club member. Sure. So I think street teams are basically the same because when you release a book, your street team is going to go out and buy it that day. <laughs> and then, you know, you, you tell your street team, hey, you show me, you show me proof of your, your, you know, show me your receipt and I'm going to send you a bracelet or I'm going to send you a bookmark or, you know, I'm going to fly to your house and take you to dinner. Hell, who the hell knows what, what all the people do. But, you don't love your fans? <laughs> I'm not getting on a damn plane. So I wouldn't fly to take my fans anywhere anyway. So, I could add I actually do have a street team. I have an amazing street team. Um, and I'm, I've been in a couple and I've seen a couple that have like thousands of people in it. It just doesn't seem like it works to me. It seems like there's more people in the bigger street teams who are there to just get like the advanced copies of your work and things like that. Um, my street team, I have 20 members and they're people who are very close to me. So, um, and they're really, it's, it's easier for me to keep track of what they're doing and to make sure that they don't let anything, you know, out or anything like that up. But what they pretty much do is like right before the book came out, I asked them if they could make like countdown banners. And so they each made like countdown banners. So as it was, I think it was like 20 days from when the book came out, we would post it every single day. And it, it worked, it really, really did work. I, I did see, and even now when they go into the groups and they'll post, you know, once a day they'll go and post something with the fly links. I noticed what my sales go up when they do that. Um, so my street team's amazing. And what I do in return to them is like, um, we're, I'm mm. actually working on an anthology with Jeannie. Um, they got an advanced copy of that. And I've sent them like, you know, like the swag stuff, like the, mag the magnets and the keychains and 
things like that. But um, if you do have a street team, uh, you want to, and it's another thing why I have mine so small, it's because you want to watch that. Because when you get those bad reviews and your street team sees it, sometimes they'll attack you, you know, they'll go after them just trying to defend you, and that's a, that, and that all comes back on you. And that's another thing about your, uh, your Facebook, your, your uh, online image, is you, the people who are helping you all are a reflection on you. And so that's why I keep my street team small, and they're really, really good, and I can keep an eye, I don't mean I don't babysit them, but I mean you could watch what they're doing and make sure that they don't make you look bad while they're helping you. So, um, my street team is small also, mm -hmm. and I like to keep it that way. Every once in a while, I might add one or two mm -hmm. just to get some additional members. Yeah. But my um, Google Docs sign up form is you have to have at least read one of my books. Mm -hmm. You have to have loved it. You have to love my work, yes. and you have because you want to be you want to make sure that they are there to promote you. Mm -hmm. I have rules set up. All of my my wonderful people know that you are not to go and bother blogs on my behalf because you do represent me and they don't. What they do is when blogs post, Teaser Tuesday, all the different things that they do, they go promote yeah. usually their favorite book of mine usually or maybe the one that I just released. And that's what they do but they never, I'm like, don't ever message blogs on my behalf because that's not what we're about. And they proofread for me. They get to read my drafts of my newest book. They give me feedback, which is very valuable. So they're kind of beta readers, readers that, as well. And it's not even to the point of a beta reader, because to me, they don't they don't dwell that deep. Some of them are a little bit more detailed than others, but I'm like, how does the story flow? How does it make you feel when you're reading it? Is there any kind of confusion in any parts of the story? You know, things like that. They're, it's just invaluable to me, because I'm getting a reader's perspective right then before it even goes to my editor, before I proofread it the final time and before I send it to my editor. And I don't always take their advice, it just depends on what they give me. You know, and that's really what I intended there, so I'm not changing that kind of thing. Yeah. But I like to keep mine small too, and we do have some ground rules. What they get in return, I give them the book before yeah. it goes live. Mm -hmm. Like, usually like the day before it goes live. Yeah. They get that, they know not to share, I trust them. And then I do give them different things at different times for promoting me because they usually tag me. So I know mm -hmm. who's promoting me and to, on what and when. And I'll send them out swag, new swag that I get, or even a signed paperback if it's like their favorite one and they, they're like, oh wow, this is my favorite book so far of yours. I may surprise them and send them a yeah. So I try to do things for like, like that with them also, but yeah, I find them totally, totally. Valuable. Yeah, and the thing with keeping them smaller too is, I mean, even if you are giving them things, if you keep it smaller, those are generally people who are going to be really interested in you just because they're a fan, you know. Um, that's like, even without them, they're going to want to do it for you. Where if you have a street team where you have thousands and thousands of members, you can't get to know them. Yeah. It's usually only maybe 10 or 15 of those thousands that are helping you anyway. So, you know. In fact, two of my street team members are here at these days. Back there. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, see, they're all in my street team. <laughs> they're all here, so yeah, it's, I would mean, keep it small. And I, in my street team also, um, my graphic designer made us um, templates, and they printed them out themselves and went to their local libraries and left them there. And um, I have, a, I have one of my street team members is from Australia, and she went to the, all the bookstores there, and there was actually actually got a, uh, an offer to have our book sold at that bookstore in Australia. So yeah, so things like that. So yeah, street teams are awesome. Street teams are, are really good for um, helping you market. Yes. And promoting you. Um, another thing, I don't know. Uh, I have a podcast or two or three, mm -hmm. um, and. One of them is one of them's a publishing discussion, and it's not safe for work. And the other is just strictly author interview. So, if you want to be on a podcast, there's a couple of things you need to know. It, know which podcast you're going to be on. If it's on a discussion, they're not going to talk about just your book. They're going to discuss all kinds of things. Usually what's happening in publishing, um, you know, might talk about marketing, 
you know, it, it's more of kind of like an author panel would be. Um, now the, <coughs> sorry, the author interview format, be prepared to send the producer or the host five to 10 questions that you want asked because they're not gonna have time to read your book every time and, unless they, they know you. You know, I, I've had some guests on my shows where I've, they've been clients, I've formatted their books, I've read their books, I've reviewed their books. So I didn't need the questions from them. But, you know, there's some genres that I don't care about, I'm not gonna read them. So I'm not gonna have intelligent questions to ask. And so have that and have all of your author information on one sheet have your author photograph if you want it put on a blog site have that there have your bio so it can be put because when I do my my um, blog post about my episode I put all the author information on there and the book links as well so it's a good idea to have a sheet that has all of your information on it ready to go so you don't have to pull all the stuff together from all your different file folders on the computer and send them over in 50 million emails. And now does anyone have questions? Tiffany's got the mic, so raise your hand and she will bring the mic to you. Does anyone want to cuss me out? <laughs> Give her the mic! You have been on <laughs> I'm sure y'all have to have some kind of questions. You had said earlier that authors need blogs, right? Um, what sort of format is most effective, do you think, for an author's blog? Well, if if you post about your writing, your writing journey, you're kind of limited. But you can combine a bunch of different stuff, not make it you know, like a complete hodgepodge where you're posting your you know, stain removal tips and your writing advice. But you know, that's part of your life if you know how to get stains out. I'm always interested. Um, <laughs> but what, you, know, you need to pick like one overall don't try to post you know if if you're a writer don't try to post about sex tips unless you write about sex you know it, don't write about political stay the hell away from politics and religion unless that's your genre stay the hell away from it because you're going to get some kind of backlash from one quarter or the other. Watch what you say on any social media about anything. I mean, think about what you post before you post it. Like, like Dina was saying earlier about um, don't get on there and, and spread negativity. You know, don't don't put your dirty laundry on social media if, if you're, like, you want people to look at you. You want them to look up to you. Um, you want them to read your books, but if they're reading what's going on in your everyday life and you're constantly complaining about it, then they're they're like, I mean, if they're reading, you got a crackhead ex-husband. They're not really gonna take that seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, so, <laughs> Sorry. So I mean, careful. Yeah, be careful how much your personal bleeds into your writing. I mean, I have, uh, you know, a couple of secret Facebook groups where I go and I do my venting about stupid shit. I She's there. <laughs> and Tiffany's there. And, um, as, you know, these people that are in your secret group are going to be the ones that you can bounce stuff off of. And the people that are in your secret group that, you know, or, or your other groups, they're going to be the ones that are going to help promote you. You promote yourself and you promote others. They're going to promote you as well. 
it's you know, cross promotion does wonders. I mean, uh, my opinion, I mean, everybody's different. Everybody's different, right? I mean, it's just like everybody has different personalities. Not everybody's gonna get along. I mean, it's like school. It's like whatever. <laughs> to me, I'm a positive person anyway, but I and I don't do drama. Um, if I feel for somebody, I might personal message them, but I won't ever put it on Facebook. I want my readers to like me and know that I'm a good person. And by putting all that out there, to me, doesn't make me look good. It's kind of like <coughs> an equivalent to a movie star. They're in the limelight. They're always being looked at anytime they go out, anytime they do anything, right? And it says a lot about a person by the way they act, by the way they talk. It really yeah, does. You're, you're still in a fishbowl. I mean, yeah, exactly. it, it's not, you don't have TMZ following you all over the place. I know. But you right? still have people that, that are looking. Yeah, you so can, I want to inspire way, you can people. hire paparazzi to follow you around for a day. Your, your cool. Service. No, but I mean, I. I want I want to inspire people and I have I've been told I have I want I want to show pos, you know positiveness to everybody and everybody has a bad day everybody has things going on in their life why do I want to add to that yeah. for anybody you know that's just kind of how I look at it but I'm a good person I'm a positive person I want people to know that if I have stuff going on in my life like I do like everybody else they don't need to know about it mm. you know one thing I notice is like most of the time like the people who read your books want to be involved in the making of your book. You know what I mean? So like, I mean, I have bad days too, and I'll post like, I'm gonna punch my book in the face. I think that was like the last bad thing I said. But I'm not gonna go on there and talk about my first. Oh, I couldn't pay. I couldn't pay my electricity bill. I'm so sad. I can't write because I you guys don't buy my books, so and now I can't pay my bills. Your readers don't want to. They don't want to know that, and it's like they shouldn't. They shouldn't know that part of you. It's just like you're, like you said, you're in a fishbowl. These people look up to you. I mean, you may not feel like you're famous, but to them, you're you're awesome. You write these books that you know they'll stay up all night reading, and for you to go on Facebook and be like, nobody's buying my book, so I can't write anymore. I can't write more unless I sell this many books. No, you don't do that. That's not. How you think that? Well, and the thing is, the thing is, that's also key is the interaction with your readers. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. So, you know, you want to stay active with them, but sometimes I just go in because I've got a really busy day of writing or I've got something going on with my kids or whatever, and I'm just like, hey, good morning, you know, I hope everybody has a great day today, you know, this is kind of the things I'm doing, you know, laundry, ugh, you know, stuff like that because I am a normal person and I want them to see me that way. And then I go, I hope everybody has a good day. I, you know, what are you guys doing today? And some people will actually answer what they're doing and I'll reply. And that's to me another key because there are some authors and some blogs that they'll ask a question, what are you reading today? And they'll get tons of answers. Now I know if it's like thousands or hundreds or whatever, that would be hard to keep up with, but they never reply to that. And that works for some and that's fine. But for me, I want to be more of a personal, when, as a reader, I like almost fell out of a chair when an author would reply to one of yeah, my questions or one of my statements or something. And again, it's that almost star factor where you're being looked up to and they want to know you and they're like, oh my gosh, I touched you or you know what I mean? It's seriously, they're, they're, yeah, you, you still have the star factor, even, you know, even though you're not, you know, getting counted by TMZ and they're not dying to find your sex tapes, you're still there. And, you know, you <laughs> might <laughs> Mine are pretty well hidden. <laughs> <laughs> and you, know, have any. you still have to have that glossy veneer. Yeah, you're a real person, but you know what? People don't want to hear that they busted a water main outside my house and I haven't been able to take a shower in four days. They don't care. <laughs> I don't want to be that. No, well, no, it, that, that was last summer. Anyway. <laughs> but, you know. That might mean something to my actual real life friends that are saying, hey, you know, come on over and you can use my shower. But people that know me on the internet, I don't want them to offer me their shower. Darn, I was going to. And there's like a difference between uh, being vulnerable and just being like uh, cool. Or, you know, like, like I said, people want to be involved in the making of your book or what it is that you do. They want to know.
know before they get the book, like how hard you've worked on it, or like the different things you went through. But they don't, they don't need to know the, the bad part of it, like how we feel when we get a bad review. And we all feel bad when we see a bad review. But to go online and just like say something about it, it's, that's not your responsibility. It's not your responsibility to reply to a bad review or to tell somebody how they should um, interpret your book. It's your job to write the book, and that's it. And then after you put it out in the world, you know, it's, it's not your job to comment on it. Okay, one, one final thing. Um, there's psychos out there online. I know you're not going to want to believe it, but there are. Um, all of my kids, and, and I talk about my children on my podcasts and online, you know, Twitter, everything else. All of, give your kids nicknames. Don't call them by their names. You know, call them princess. You know, I mean, I've got Alfonso Princess Spain. Bubba the Texas Terrorist, and Wee Bossy Baby, and it fits each and every one of them. You don't have to give them, you know, an elaborate name, just don't give out their real name. You I say uh, twin A and twin B. <laughs> so, well, actually, all of, all of mine are their actual nicknames, but it's not their legal <laughs> names, so, you know. Yeah, I keep most of my family stuff off of I mean, I have my personal Facebook that I don't let, like, readers and things on. But I have two different ones, and I keep my family, mostly. I mean, I show up the picture on the first day of school, but, uh, yeah, I didn't say the name. Well, let's see, I'm in business with my mom, so um, <sighs> I don't know her bad mouth There is crazy people. I just had a girl message me, and she was telling me not to sell my soul to the devil, or she wouldn't read my books anymore. I said, that's why you keep your... <laughs> yeah, when, when, I had, when I had the guy tell me that he was watching for me on the news, I kind of <laughs> lost it a little bit. So, I mean, this was, you know, after three months of messages that I just ignored. I mean, so, yeah, there, there's crazy people out there. Protect yourself. Don't check in everywhere you go in your personal life. Someone's going to be able to find it. You know, last year there was the agent that the guy followed her from tracking her social media and attacked her with a baseball bat. This is not an isolated occurrence. All kinds of crap happens. Protect yourself. Put personal out there, but don't put too much personal out there. So. All right, so is that it? That's it. Peace out. <laughs>